I want to talk about loving our families today and, um, and a little bit what that looks like. I love digging into the word, so we're going to do that today. Um, but, you know, family is arguably the most important social institution. And so family, and I don't really want to define family, what that means, but I'm just for the sake of today, I'm talking about your parents, your grandparents, your kids, your uh, siblings, your aunts and uncles, um, half family, like half parent, like the, the half sisters or the stepsisters or um, step parents, all of those people that have been like through adoption, through blood, like it's like your family, you know, and we, we know that the nuclear family is uh, not really all that common to find anymore. And so it's just our families. What is God saying about your family, our families, and how do we love them? And so, you know, we've just gone through one year of a global pandemic and families took a beating. Um, I, you know, it doesn't, I saw on, um, in Canada, I think it was the star um, was writing an article on our kids' help phone line. Um, and it's the title was 4 million calls for help in 2020. And that is 4 million phone calls that came in of kids anywhere between the ages of five and like 28 saying, help me. Um, and you know, this it's been a hard year for family because um, we rely on school, we rely on work, we rely on our social life to get out of our house. And it's been a year we've been stuck in our household with people that aren't always the most loving people and it can be a place of real pain. Um, and there's, you know, we, we've had in the news here in Canada as well, in Toronto, um, opioid overdoses have just skyrocketed through the roof. Um, I know when the pandemic started, they, um, the, the calls for domestic violence and abuse just went skyrocketed. They called it the pandemic in the pandemic. And so families took a metaphorical and a literal beating this year. And God is so for family and he has a purpose for family. And I want to talk about that this morning. And his purpose for family is to come in and to love and encounter and transform every single member of the family. But he wants to partner with you and I to do that. And it takes a very active partnership to bring Jesus into family. And so you know what? Family this year has been painful for so many people. Um, and it's devastating. It's absolutely devastating to even just hear about kids and youth stuck in a home where, you know, they relied on school to get out and have some relief. And um, you know what, this is uh, just a side note, but you can volunteer for the Kids Help Phone 9. Um, my sister started volunteering a few months ago. I think it's like a minimum of four hours a week. You know, they train you for six weeks. And you, if, if you have a heart for this, you can be like a frontline worker just receiving these calls. So um, that that is an opportunity for us to love other families. But, um, but for today, I'm talking about family. So it is an important social institution. I, my undergrads in psychology, I never took a sociology course. Sociology would study family as a part of society, but I studied uh, like uh, psychology in society. So it's more like our development. And so that is the primary place where we are, what they would say, um, in, in school, socialization, the process of socialization. So it's the process of which we are growing up and we were, are, we are learning how to behave, how to act, how to think, uh, what to believe, what is normal in, in life and in, in society. And so God designed family to be a place where it's, it's powerful training and learning of love, the way of Jesus. But we know, you know, I know that, you know what, because of sin and, and because of pain and hurt, um, it's, that's not always the case. And we saw last year, people in lockdowns in their households. And so, but God, God's design is for family. When you look in the Garden of Eden, that's always the place, Genesis 1, if you want to um, look into the Bible, like God's original intention, you look, you know, Genesis 1 and 2. Um, but God, in Genesis 1, you see family. You see family between God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a powerful unity of, of communion, of community, of family between the three. Let us, let us make man in our image. Um, the let us happens when it's in the, for creating humans, for uh, creating Adam, let us. So it's a family adding a part of 
God's family into the family. This is like, okay, I'm creating my family. Um, do you see it in God coming and breathing the breath of life into Adam and into humanity? The breath of life is coming into you and I, into humans. We see it with Adam and Eve becoming one flesh. So this is like family, 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 community community, community. This is God's design for us. We're not meant to live alone on a desert island, although a desert island sounds amazing right now, but we are meant to live in community and communion and with family. Um, And then we see it as well. So with Adam and Eve uh, becoming one flesh, and we can see when the sin and the fall came in, sin uh, the first thing that I went after after was the breaking of family and of communion uh, with God and 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 Adam and Eve, that relationship, and with Adam and Eve amongst each other, that family. Sin came in, came shame, came blame, came accusation, and there was this like cut of family, and there came punishment. But we know that God, His original intention is for family to be a hub, to be a training ground, to be a place where we receive, we learn, we grow in the love of God. And so this is what God wants to bring us back to. And this is what I'm talking about this morning. Um, and so, do you know, uh, the way of love, we're talking about loving others, you know, and, uh, you know, it's, it's not that hard walking down the street and seeing someone that needs your help and helping them that's loving. We need to love our neighbor. We need to love people in our city, in our, um, in our communities, in our neighborhoods. In my opinion, loving our family is just a little bit more trickier. And here's why. It is not a sprint to the finish line. It is the longest marathon you're ever going to run. From the day you're you are born to the day you die. It is a marathon of love in your family. Um, So I want you to think I'm running a marathon. And there's times when you're running a marathon. I I ran a half marathon like (laughs) seven years ago. If I was told to run a 5K now, I couldn't make it. But seven years ago, I ran a half marathon. And there's moments in the race where you're like, I need to slow down, I need a break. And the best part of running, I ran the Scotiabank here in Toronto and there's a a whole 21 kilometers. There's like people with the best signs ever saying you can do it. And they're clapping and they're cheering you on. And you're like, yes, yes, these people are getting me through this marathon. And then there's places where they're handing you the water or they're handing you the juice or the electrolytes. And you're like, okay, take a break you know, refresh, refresh, get my body what it needs, and then you continue. And this marathon of loving, bringing Jesus, bringing love into our families, it is a marathon. It's not a sprint. There's going to be good moments. There's going to be bad moments. It's going to go up and down. But we are on this road, like a race, in this marathon. And, um, you know, my husband and my dad, every time they're together, they talk about the stock market. And I'm like, oh, like, get me out of this room. No, not, does, it's not my language at all. But um, so I might, I might mess this up for those of you who are financial people. But, you know, you invest, you invest, you, you put your money somewhere and you invest and you watch the stocks. And there's days where it goes up. There's days where it goes down. And, you know, 10 years of marriage, I, I let my husband talk to me about it. And I'm like, <laughs> I will listen. It's okay. It's up. It's going down. Oh, this is happening. It's going up. It's going down. Um, But you have to measure what you are uh, gaining over the long period over. You have to look at, you know, the year, you know, the month, the year, the years where you're like, oh, I can see the return. Um, So you can look at it, you know, every day. Okay, I'm going to stop talking about this because you can look at what's going on every day, but um, it's it's the return is in the long run. And that's what I would say for family. It's this marathon. Um, you're investing, you're investing, and there's days where you're like, this is going down. There's days where like, this is going up. But when you invest, you look at the return in the long run. And you know what? Love never fails, never fails. It is an investment of love. Um, and, and love conquers it all. So I just want to say to you watching <laughs> that my message today is not about perfectionism <laughs> because um, then we've all failed. But this message is about, am I investing love? Um, and I don't want to look at the day or the week or the season and see failure. I actually want to look at um, the long run, the end of the race, the finish line and say, okay, you know what? I need to pull over for some refreshment, but I'm back on this race. And I want Jesus to come and break through in my family. 
And uh, I had this dream a couple nights ago, and I'm a dreamer. I dream every night. Some of them are just like pizza dreams, mean nothing. Some of them I'm like, this is profound, but I don't know what um, what this is. But I had this dream a few nights ago, and um, I know that it's for me, but I, f- I feel so strongly that it is for everyone watching this morning. And uh, normally I dream like the day or two before I, I have a microphone, and I'm like, I know this is how God speaks to me. But I had this dream where um, there's this this man and he's a priest. He, he's like wearing the clothes of a priest. Um, and he's this tall, big man, like jolly, like so jolly, like Santa Claus almost. And I look at him and I'm like, are you my great grandfather? And he said, I'm the great grandfather of your grandfather. And I said, oh, what side are you on? And in the dream, he started speaking Portuguese. So I was like, oh, okay, you're on my mom's side. But then we transported to a different place. And uh, we were in Agra, India, which is where my dad was born, which is my dad's side. So I'm like, I'm confused now. You're the, the great grandfather of my grandfather, but I don't know what side this is on. And uh, he looked at me and said, there's joy, there's joy. And I woke up. And so, you know, um, in, in our families, I mean, it's, there, it's, it could be a place of pain, of trauma. It's called like generational, transgenerational trauma, where the trauma of the grandparents through the parenting, through the household, through the parenting, it just comes down to the parents, which comes down to the kids. Um, and it, it's easy to focus on that when we're focusing on inner healing. But I just want all of us this morning to just zoom out a bit Zoom out a bit, because, you know, for me, um, I'm very much aware of the work of the deliverance of the inner healing that I've done on things that have come down through the family that is the the work of the enemy to kill, to steal, to destroy. You know, okay, you know, there's trauma on this side. There's depression on this side. There's alcoholism on this side. There's emotional abuse on this side. And, you know, you're working hard. You're working. You're praying. You're declaring. You're healing your heart. All those sorts of things. It's good. But I felt like this dream was God saying, there is so much generational blessing and what are you going to focus on and what are you going to declare in your family and um, my husband and I have just spent the last few years you know I had my firstborn three years ago where we just honed in on family like this is a big deal you know we want to put a stick in the ground like you know what from all the generations before me I'm saying no to every curse to every um pain and trauma that comes in through sin from any any work of the enemy, but I'm saying yes to the the blessings and what is the blessings. And over the years and over the time where we're so used to saying, no, 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 this is what I'm saying no to, but God is like, no, there's joy, like there's joy. And I just want you to ask the Holy Spirit now, like what is the generational blessings of your grandparents, of your great, 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 great grandparents that God wants to bring in through the line. And we want to partner with Jesus to bring that love into our households, into our families, whatever family that is for you and me. It could be in your household. It could be another household. But we want to say, Jesus, I am bringing you, your transformative love, grace, power into my household. And yeah, there's bad days. Yeah, there's bad seasons for me, for the people that um, that I'm in a family with. But God, I'm in it for the long haul. And um, do you know what? It's the longest race you'll run in loving the same people for the rest of your lives, loving the same people. It's not, you know, one act of kindness is so powerful. And if we all did that, um, what we could change in our cities, in our communities, in our nation. But if we zoom in and hone in this morning on our family, it's choosing love for the rest of our lives. And that's where it gets tricky. Okay, if you have your Bibles on you, open up to Mark chapter six, verse four. Um, this is, I've, I've never really focused on this ever in the Bible, but I, you know, I'm like, God, what, do you, what am I gonna do from the Bible? <laughs> and I just heard so clearly, a prophets without honor in their hometown. Like, what does this mean? God, I don't want to preach on this. I have nothing, like, I don't know what this means. Um, so all four gospels have this um, part where Jesus states a prophet um, is not without honor. So it has honor except in their hometown. And so all four gospels say it. John says it really, really quickly. But I'm going to look at Mark chapter 6. Um, Let's just do verse one, actually. So Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to preach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. 
Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's this wisdom that has been given to him? What are these remarkable, uh, remarkable miracles he's performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is without honor except in his own town, among his relatives and in his own home. And then verse five, it says, he could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Uh, this is a little bit like um, this, this part of the Bible. It's um, just a little bit discouraging, but um, you know, we can look at this and do a big message on faith, which I think this has a lot to do with faith. But um, what I want to talk about is why did they have a lack of faith? So there was a lack of faith that prevented Jesus from performing the miracles that he was already building a reputation for. Um, and so in Luke chapter four, it's, uh, it's the same account, but basically this account is coming right after Jesus comes out of the wilderness of, of the temptation. And it says, when he came out of his 40 days in the wilderness, the spirit of power was on him. He, was, he came out of those 40 days in power. And then, so he comes here to his hometown and actually couldn't demonstrate and, and, um, reveal that much power. And it says there was a lack of faith. And in Mark chapter six, verse six, he says, he was amazed at their lack of faith. But what I want to look at in this verse is why, particularly here, was there a lack of faith? Well, it says right before, um, in verse Verse three, it says, they took offense at him. So it was offense that was the reason for their lack of faith. But what was their offense from? From knowing, from being in his hometown, from knowing where he was from. This is the Jesus, the two-year-old, the three-year-old, the eight-year-old, the nine-year-old that we've seen our whole lives playing on the streets with the other kids. We know his family. We know the shortcomings of his family. We know what's, you know, <laughs> we can we know, we can tell you what's wrong with the family, what, you know, where they messed up because Jesus is perfect, but his family's not. So I'm sure people can see like, these are just mere humans. Um, we can see their weaknesses. We know that it's a family that that are carpenters. Jesus is just a carpenter. Um, we've seen you in your youth, in your adolescence years. <laughs> I don't know what Jesus as a teenager looked like, but you know what? They looked at him and they're like, we know your brothers. We know your sisters. We know your parents. We know what you do. Um, and now you're coming here. And in, um, in Luke chapter four, it's when he opened Isaiah 61 and said, the spirit of the Lord is now upon me. You know, Jesus comes out of the wilderness. The spirit of the Lord comes on in. He comes into the synagogue, says, this is, I am the fulfillment of Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. And they're like, we know who you are. We know where you're from. And, uh, and actually they were offended how could you, we've seen you as a kid, come in here and say you're the fulfillment of that. And because of their offense, they had lack of faith and Jesus couldn't perform any miracles. And I want to ask you and I, what would it look like if you and I received Jesus in our hometowns, received Jesus in our households? And I would say the message of this morning is, is there a fence in your life and in your heart towards your parents, your grandparents, your kids, your spouse that you're not dealing with that is actually producing a lack of faith for Jesus to come in and do the miraculous in your family? And I know that, um, you know, <laughs> family for some of us could be like, you know what, it's uh, mainly good. It's been a joyful place. It's been a place of freedom and joy and love. And a lot of us can say family. When I say the word family, it's like, oh, there's pain. Oh, I can just, and for some, most of us, it's a mixed bag. I would say it's a mixed bag. There's been joy, there's been love, there's been pain, there's been hurt. Um, and so do you know what? I just feel, I just want to ask you this morning, um, what is in your hearts that is stopping uh, that is offense towards a family member that is stopping Jesus coming in and doing the miraculous in your hometown and in your household. Because you know what? Jesus came in power, but it was offense and a lack of faith that prevented him to do what he wanted to come and do in his hometown. And so, do you know what? I'm like, God, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be that person in my family that 
because of my offense, because of, um, you know what, I've seen all the failures and shortcomings of my family members that I can't actually, um, and I'm holding on to unforgiveness, pain, anger, criticism, cynicism, that I actually can't allow Jesus to come in and just be like, come with love. I want to partner with Jesus and bring love to my family. I want to lay low. I want to go low and bring Jesus in. Um, And so, you know what? Jesus is in you. He's in you. He's in you with love and there's power in you. But actually, you have to lay down a fence that is producing a lack of faith for God to come in and do something in our families. And I just want to do one last Bible before, you know, I just, I, I really want to minister. But this morning we sang uh, The Blessing by Carrie Job. This song came out the start of the pandemic, and it was just so powerful because, do you know what? We're praying a blessing and a covering over our families in a time where there is um, like serious health and, and medical Uh, things coming against that just brings fear. And we're praying a blessing and a covering over our families. And so I just wanted to talk really quickly about where that part of that verse where it says, uh, may his favor be upon you um, and a thousand generations, your families and their families and their families and their families. And in Exodus chapter 34, uh, God is giving the covenant to Moses. Moses goes up the mountain and God's like, this is how we're going to have a relationship. This is how we're going to do it. This is how we're going to do covenant. And in the midst of that, the people think Moses is dead. They're tired of waiting for God. They're getting impatient and they uh, melt all their gold, build a golden calf, worship it. Moses comes down the mountain with like, <laughs> with these stone tablets and uh, uh, the law and how to build the temple or the tabernacle and how to have relationship with the Holy of Holies, seeing the people just completely forget who their God is and who part the seas for them uh, just a f- like a few moments prior. And, um, you know, so the, the, that covenant's broken. You know, Moses throws the, t- the tablets, it's broken. And man, what an atrocity, what a breaking of the God's heart. And what does God do? Yeah, there's punishment. Yeah, there's consequences. You can read um, Exodus chapter 34. But God gives the covenant again to Moses saying, okay, let's do this a second time. And like, what a powerful story where God's like, I want relationship with you. Um, And you know what? In the midst of me saying, let's have relationship, you're breaking my heart. And I'm going to say, let's have relationship again. Um, What a powerful demonstration of family. And so, Moses is like, I, I, I can't do that. I can't leave these people. I don't want to do this without you. And this is where uh, Moses was like, I need to see you. I need to see you. And so God's like, I'm going to pass by you. And when God goes and passes by Moses, he makes this powerful, powerful decorate, declaration of who he is. This is where God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, the Father, proclaims who he is in scripture. And he says, Moses, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands of generations and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. And when God is saying that, he's saying this in the context of a golden calf that was just built moments before. And God is saying, I am compassionate. I am gracious. I am slow to anger. I'm abounding in love and faithfulness, and I maintain my love to thousands of generations. And it goes on to say that he doesn't leave the guilty go unpunished. Yeah, he uh, punishes the kids for the wickedness of the parents. And, you know, there's pain, there's trauma, the things that there are things that pass down in families. But God is saying for the, uh, for the fourth and fifth generation, but God is saying, I maintain love to thousands of generations. And so Jesus is saying, I am for the family, but I am for the generational line. And I just think, you know what? This morning, like if you're watching, just like stand up in your living room <laughs> and be like, you know what? I'm gonna put a stick in the ground. I'm gonna say, God, you love my generational line. You um, are compassionate, you're gracious, and you show your love to thousands of generations. And I'm gonna say no to any area where the enemy has come in. I'm gonna say yes to his faithfulness and love that's in the blessing and the blessing and the blessing that God wants to come in and do in family. And uh, he is compassionate and gracious. And all throughout the Old Testament, we have Jonah, we have Joel, we have prophets, we have Joshua just saying, God, I know you said that you are faithful and you maintain love to thousands of generations. And they're declaring it again and again and again, because like, God, we know you are a God of generations. And you know what? 
guys, I want this morning for all of us to, st to stand up <laughs> and say, and you can all stand up, um, I want Jesus in my hometown. I don't want him to say, wow, astonished at the lack of faith and I can, you know, with very few miracles, but I want to say, God, Jesus, I want to partner with you and my family. I want to let go of any offense towards anyone. I want to let go of pain. I want to let go of hurt. And, and that takes time, but it's putting yourself back on that race. You know what? I, I took myself off this race. I'm putting myself back on this race. When I had this dream about my, the grandfather, the great-grandfather, my grandfather, saying there's joy, there's joy. I, I told my mom, she grabbed my hand and she's like, yes, yes, we take, we receive this joy in Jesus' name. And I feel like this morning, you know what, is there something that you need, God is saying, I want you to grab hold of this for your family. And you know what, we want to love our families well. Okay, I have a few different ministry calls. Number one, I'm going to say all three and then you can decide which ones you're going to respond to. So, Number one, if you are someone who's like, Mel, I've been on this race for decades and yeah, I'm growing tired. I'm growing weary. I'm exhausted, utterly exhausted. Even from this past year, my household, my family, I'm exhausted and I'm worn out. Number one, I want to pray for you for refreshing. Just like you're running that marathon, pull over to the side, get your electrolytes, get your carbs in, get your water in and you're back on the race. Number two, um, I feel really strongly, it's, uh, about pride. And so, you know, the moment I became a parent, I realized I'm not perfect. I'm making mistakes. I, uh, you know, I, I want to do this better. I want to do this well. But for some reason, when my husband or someone tells me, you know what, <laughs> like, don't tell me what, how to parent my kids. And there's this level of pride where I actually can't receive teaching. I can't listen. I can't receive correction or direction or wise counsel on how I do family because it's like, you know, the, the pride I'm holding on to. Do you not know what I've had to give up, you know? Um, and so number two, it's, Normally the prideful people are never the ones to say, I want to, <laughs> to respond to this, but I really just want the Holy Spirit to come speak to you right now. Do I need to say, Jesus, come into my hometown. I want to lay low. I want to let go of pride. I just want to let it go. Be like, God, I've made mistakes. I'm not perfect. That's not the goal. The goal is to say, Jesus, come into my family and I want to partner with you. So that's number two, just lay low. I'm putting myself on this race. I've not been on this race yet. Number three, um, I just want to pray, you know, for the families where there has been like, it's been like a brokenness, like, utter brokenness um, for, for many years, but even also this past year. Um, and I just, you know what? Our church family, I, if we do this, I want this to be a powerful declaration um, to our society, to our city, to our nation. Um, this is what family can look like. This is, what, this is how we can do it. We can go back to the original intention of a Christ-centered family, a love-centered family, what, you know, what it looked like in Genesis chapter one. And so um, I just wanna pray for you that God will come heal your hearts. Okay, number one, if this is you, you can put your hand on your heart, you can put your hand up, hands out. Don't do anything with your hands. But if you feel worn out, Mel, I've been on this race and it's exhausting. Uh, my kids, my parents, my step, step parents, you know, foster kids, whatever it is. Um, uh, Holy Spirit, I ask that for all of us who are saying, yeah, I'm worn out. This, this year has been exhausting when it comes to family. God, come and bring refreshing. Come and bring refreshing. Come and bring restoration. I bless your sleep. I bless your time with the Lord to be refreshing. I bless all of your interactions um, with your family members to just have grace, have grace, have grace. That there would just be a yeah, that there would just be a lightness. There would be peace. There would be joy in your family, in Jesus' name. Okay, for those of you that are like, I've actually never put myself in this race because I don't think there's anything wrong with my family, but I'm realizing today that I actually want to invite Jesus um, into this. And I want to put myself on this marathon and say, I'm, I'm bringing real change and transformation into my family, to my kids, to my parents, all of that. Um, I just want to go low and say, do you know what, Jesus, I need you. I need you. Come speak to me. I've been trying to have it all together, <laughs> but actually I just want to, I want to do love better with my, in my marriage, all of that. Um, yep. And even if that is, you know, looking to your spouse in the room right now and just saying, <laughs> you know what, I, I actually want, I, I, 
I want to go low. Jesus, I pray for all of us. I want to put myself on this race. I want to invite Jesus to my household, to my hometown. I want to see what he can do with love and power. And I want to partner with him. God, I pray for all of us that you would start us on this journey, um, that there would just be so much joy in it as well. But God, that you would bring wisdom, bring clarity, um, that you would bring the right people in our lives um, in the context of discipleship and wise counsel. How do we get there? How do we start? How do we do this? God, we want your favor in our families and their children and their children and their children. And the decision we're making today is not just affecting your life, not just affecting your current family's life, but it's going to affect generations from now, the decision you make today. Do you want love? Do you want healing? Do you want wholeness in your great, 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 great grandkids? Okay, let's say yes today. Okay, and the last thing, if you are broken, you are shattered, absolutely just, I'm in pain. This is not, family has not been good. It's not been good. And Mel, you talking about family is frustrating because I've done everything I could to run away from it. God, I pray for all of those people. God, that you would come and bring healing. I speak healing. May 2021 not look like 2020, but may 2021 look like healing, healing, power, transformation. May we encounter your love, God. May we encounter your love that comes, transforms us, changes us, that we would never be the same again. God, that we can be Jesus. We can, we can be Jesus in our families. Let's let go of our offense today. Let go of what you're holding on to against your spouse, <laughs> your kids, your parents. Let it go. Let's let Jesus, I let it go. I want you to come and perform mighty miracles in my family. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. We're so glad you're watching. Um, I pray that God blesses you, keeps you, his favor be upon you, may his face shine upon you for you, your children, your families, their children, their children, their children. Amen.